We are closing in on 7,700 subscribers here on the channel. We've been gaining subscribers like crazy, and it's all credit to you guys. But as you see, we're only 12 subs away. So if you aren't subscribed and you love staying up to date with Vikings news, Vikings rumors, go down there, hit that subscribe button. We only need 12 more people. Let's see if we can hit 7,700 sub, subs on today's video. Welcome to Vikings Now. I am your host, Patrick Seatman. Joining me on a Vikings Victory Monday where I got some injury news and a couple of overreactions from another wild game against the New York Jets, which, man, this was a back-and-forth battle. The Vikings actually ended up getting the win, 27-22. to They're up 20-6 to at halftime, allowed the Jets to get back into the ballgame in the second half. But Kirk Cousins, not his best performance of the year. He was 21-35, 173 yards, and a touchdown. Overall, though, Vikings got the win. I'll be getting into some overreactions later on in today's video. But first, I want to start off with some injury updates, and that's what Chris Thomason, Vikings beat reporter, broke down for us. So Caleb Evans, he left the game yesterday with a concussion. They already ruled him out for next week's game against the Detroit Lions. He actually went to Twitter, and he was not too happy about that. But Cameron Dantzler, he has a really strong chance of being activated off the IR and being back versus the Detroit Lions, which will help a pretty depleted Vikings secondary. Then also, Christian Darisaw, he's missed the last two games with those concussions he had in the Bills game and the Patriots game. Should hope to get him back against the Lions. I sure hope we do, but it's still a day-to-day -day thing. So there's the kind of Vikings key injury update for you guys. But now some overreactions. We got to talk about it. We got to talk about Mr. Donatel and his Vikings defense. Is it still a problem? Yes, obviously it's still a problem. This defense got gashed yesterday, still running that kind of soft zone coverage that they were. But the Jets offense, especially in the second half, were able to have their way against this Vikings team. They had 120 yards rushing on the ground, 366 yards passing through there, adding up to almost 500 yards of total offense. But this team situationally on third down yesterday where it was able to hold the Jets to 3 of 16. And this was the key to the kind of victory for the Minnesota Vikings, only allowing 22 points. The Jets had five field goals all in the red zone. So credit to the Vikings defense yesterday. A little bend, don't break. But, man, if you look at these statistics from the overall season, that's correct. The Vikings are dead last in passing yards and total yards per game in the NFL. It's incredible. I mean, I'm honestly shocked that this team is 10-2, and two, giving up the most passing yards and most yards per game in the whole league. But Cam Bynum, the Vikings' safety, he had some pretty interesting words because obviously the Vikings' defense is kind of under scrutiny right now for giving up a ton of yards, but he had to say this. We never want to give up yards like that, but as long as we are, we're coming down with the win, there are a lot of intricacies with the small details of maybe one guy getting out of their assignment, so we have to play clean ball and get off the field. A lot of times we gave up those yards and held them to three points, which they did. That's a win for us, but at the end of the day, we don't want to give up that many. And the Vikings, honestly, they have had some key game-winning turnovers. I mean, look at this. Remember Josh Metellus, week three against the Lions, that game-winning interception. Cameron Dancer, that game-winning forced fumble against the Bears where he ripped it from Amir Smith-Marset. And then Patrick Peterson. That big interception he had against the Bills and obviously yesterday, the Cam Bynum interception. So I kind of ask this, how big of an issue is this Vikings defense? Overall, I obviously think it's an issue. You can't be giving up that m amount of yards per game. It's just you're going to eventually end up getting kicked in the ass. But you're having Dalvin Tomlinson, Cameron Dancer coming back from injury. I'm waiting to get those two back before I kind of give my full analysis of if this Vikings defense is that bad or not but i'll ask you guys how concerned are you about the vikings defense this will be the pin comment on today's video get down in the comments scale it one through ten i'm probably sitting at maybe a probably a seven or an eight right now honestly because this defense man they give up a ton of yards but second overreaction on today's video are the vikings frauds we will see. I'm not going to answer that just yet, and I'll be getting into that a little more on today's video, but I do want to give a quick shout-out to today's sponsor, Fetch. Fetch right now, Vikings Now, is brought to you by Fetch. Fetch is super easy to use, and it's a free app that lets you earn rewards on literally anything you buy. 
scan any physical receipt or e-receipt and you will earn points for your purchases. And the process only takes seconds. You don't have to worry about where the receipt is from or what's on it. So let me show you how simple it is. All you do is open up the Fetch app, press the orange camera button, snap a photo of your receipt, then hit the submit button and you'll see confetti pop showing that you have earned more reward points. It's a simple process. You can also click the e-receipt function to get rewarded for Amazon purchases or other online shopping by syncing your email account. You can redeem those points for gift cards at Amazon, Starbucks, or any of the 100 retailers and restaurants available. Fetch is available on iPhone and Android. Use our link, chatsports.com slash fetch, and enter promo code chat at sign up for 5,000 points when you scan your first receipt. That's the equivalent of a free $5 gift card for you guys for just when you get started it's a free app and the 5,000 bonus points is only for a limited time so make sure you take advantage of it get started now at chatsports.com slash fetch and enter promo code chat the link is in the comments and description of today's video now talking about the vikings being frauds this is a pretty interesting stat that i saw on twitter it says in the past 20 years there have been 53 teams with 10 or more wins through 13 weeks of the nfl season among that group, the Vikings plus 10 point differential ranks dead last at 53rd by a wide margin. The sec no other team was worse than a plus 36. This team is winning close games, but I feel like people are overreacting. Because if you take a look at this NFC playoff picture right now, you see that the Vikings are sitting at 10 and 2. And having that number two seed, even though it, they probably won't end up getting that number one seed. I still think having that number two seed is huge because you will most likely be playing two home playoff games. And then you never know if the Eagles get knocked out early. You could have three straight pl home playoff games to get to the Super Bowl. Winning matters, obviously, in the NFL. And just be grateful because I see a lot of fans complaining. And honestly, a lot of fans were kind of complaining on the video yesterday that this Vikings team keeps winning a bunch of close games. Why can't we blow out a team? I don't care about how you win in the NFL as much as other people. I understand point differential is a great stat that a lot of people like to throw around to kind of determine if a team's good or great. I don't care how you win, just win. Because if you look at the Vikings last time, they have had a record of 10-2 and two or better through the first 12 games. 2017, reached the NFC Championship. 2009, reached the NFC Championship. 2000, NFC Championship. 1998, NFC Championship. 1975 divisional round, 1973 Super Bowl, 1970 divisional round, 1969 Super Bowl. Obviously, it's not a guarantee you make it here, but if you start 10 and 2 on the year, you have a really good chance to make it far in the playoffs. Dustin Baker will show up some more stats on the Vikings because this is a very unique team. I mean, they win games by the closest margin I feel like possible, which I mean, we already shown by the stats, but he said the Vikings haven't beaten a team by 17 plus points in about three years. The last time they did that was in 2019 at the Los Angeles Chargers. That, this is only the second longest such drought in the NFL behind only the Houston Texans, which is the worst team in the NFL by far. This is a very unique group, but they keep on winning, and I'm very excited about that. I'll ask you guys this. Are the Vikings contenders short and simple? Do you think this team, the way it's constructed right now, can they go win a Super Bowl? Type Y for yes. Type N for no. I'm going to be typing my Ys in the comments down below. But I want to hear for you. Type Y for yes. N for no. If the Vikings are Super Bowl contenders. Third overreaction. Is this offensive elite? Offense elite. This was a tough one for me. I'm going to go maybe so far. This Vikings offense, it's weird. Because if the defense is that bad, which they've been all year, and the Vikings offense, you would assume they carry this team to a lot of victories. But if you look at the stats, it's not like they're top 10 in anything. I mean, the Vikings yard per game. They're at 19th, passing yards, 10th, rushing yards, 25th, points per game, pretty solid at 11th, but the third down percentage at 13th. None of these are top 10. And Kirk Cousins this year so far, he has been pretty solid. I mean, he obviously was putting up better numbers last year, but he has been clutch down the stretch. He's got the most game-winning drives and most fourth-quarter comebacks in the league, 2,900 yards, 18 touchdowns, 9 interceptions. But really the catalyst to this offense is Justin Jefferson. He's second in the league in receiving 1,200 yards, six touchdowns at about 14.5 yards per catch with 88 receptions on the year. Like I was saying, this team is weird. They aren't top 10 in any statistical category on offense, but they have been great situationally. The Vikings offense this year, whether it's been 
in that fourth quarter drive when you really need it the most, when the other team is knocking on the door. And even though the Vikings offense may have gone three and out on the last three possessions, it just always seems like they answer that bell in the fourth quarter and they go and make plays. But I do want to touch on the Vikings offensive line because they've been under scrutiny in the past weeks. But this past week, I thought they had one of their best games of the year. Shout out to Blake Brando. He's mainly the guy I want to highlight on this list. So this was from Eric Thompson. He broke it down on overall pa- or run blo- overall grade, run block grade, pass block, and then pressures allowed. Blake Brandle, he was great. He only allowed four pressures, which actually was the most. But overall, his pass block and run block game was really solid. And then if you see Ed Ingram down there with his 68.9 overall grade, he was actually pretty solid. And if you guys remember, in the first nine games of Ed Ingram's career this year, he allowed a 10.5% pressure rate which was actually dead last in the nfl but his past three games 4.3 percent going against very solid defensive line units shout out that ingram here's another tweet from sean borman there was a lot of great just kind of stats being thrown out on twitter today which i wanted to get up to you guys but his overall pff grade like i just said it was a 68.9 which is third highest mark of the season only allowing one pressure to a very good jets defense going against quinn and williams He's allowed five pressures in the last three games after allowing 17 pressures in weeks 8 through 10, which where he has really struggled. So it's great to see Ed Ingram, obviously our second-round rookie out, out of LSU, kind of taking that second step forward into kind of being the guard that we kind of hoped he would be drafting him out of LSU. But I want to ask you guys this. Grade the Vikings offense. If you had to give them a grade, A, B, C, D, or F. Overall, if you're looking at the totality of the year, I would probably lean towards a B to B plus grade. Obviously, they have not been consistently great throughout all four quarters, but situationally, they have been fantastic, and they're the biggest reason for this Vikings 10-2 and record because, frankly, it's not the defense. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys made it to the end of the video, you guys are a real one. I love seeing the real ones in the comments showing me who the real ones are that watch throughout all the videos. Subscribe to the channel. We're going to be going live for the Vikings-Lions game this Sunday, so make sure you guys are there. Vikings, if they win, they clinch the NFC North. Who would have thought? So thank you guys so much for watching. Type real one down below if you made it this far in today's video. See you guys next time. Let's go Vikes.